Hello Steelers and welcome to this video where I'll be showing you how I painted these Battlefront 50mm Romanian infantry. I've based these for Chain of Command, but there's no reason why you couldn't use them in Flames of War or any other game just by basing them differently. I'm going to put a list of all the materials that I used in the description as usual. The paints are mostly Vallejo though, however, unless I mention a specific brand. But before we start, let's have a look at the Romanian army in the Second World War. In 1940, a fascist coup in Romania, led by Marshal Ion Antonescu, cemented the country's position with the Axis powers, which were led by Nazi Germany. In June of 1941, as Hitler declared war on the Soviet Union, Romania followed suit and not only contributed oil to the Nazi war machine, but also manpower. The Romanian army joined Germany in attacking the Soviet Union, and after Germany was the second largest of all the Axis powers on the Eastern Front, with over 600,000 men in the Romanian army. They supplied more men to the Eastern Front than all of the other Axis powers combined, and this number increased to 1.1 million men under arms by the summer of 1944. Fully in step with the other Axis powers, Romania committed genocide against the Jewish population of not only Romania, but the areas of Soviet Russia that they moved through, and were only second again to Germany in the number of people murdered in the Holocaust. Militarily, the Romanian army fought their way forward on the southern advance of Operation Barbarossa, moving through the Ukraine, Bessarabia, and holding the German flank at Stalingrad. During the winter of 1942-43, the Soviet counter-offensive, codenamed Operation Uranus, smashed through the Romanian army and cut the German 6th Army off in Stalingrad itself, where it eventually surrendered. This was the greatest defeat the German army had been dealt up till that time. 1943 was spent holding against Soviet attacks, but the army was gradually pushed back to the frontiers of Romania herself. In August of 1944, King Michael I led a successful coup against the Antonescu dictatorship and not only signed a peace treaty with the Allies, but then joined them. Fighting immediately began between Romanian forces and Hungarian forces who were present, but with the help of the Soviet army, Romanian soldiers fought their way through Transylvania, Hungary, Yugoslavia, Austria and also the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia, being involved in the fighting for Budapest and then in 1945 the assault on Prague. This switch in size and the size of the Romanian armed forces has led them to be referred to as the Third Axis and Fourth Ally. OK, let's get to the painting guide. I'm painting these figures for Chain of Command, which means they will be based individually. You can follow the same route as I go here, even if you're basing your figures as multiples on bases, such as for O Group or Flames of War. I would just do the basing as a last step. However, I'm using individual 15mm diameter MDF bases for my figures and I attach them using a spot of superglue, once I've cleaned all the flash and the extra metal off the figures. Once the superglue is dry, I begin to build up the base with polyfiller. This is a hard drying material used for filling holes in walls or wood, and it's called spackle in the US. Normally this takes a few hours to dry, as we're only using a small amount, but I'd be more inclined to let it dry overnight just to ensure that it has gone rock hard. With the base now dry, I stick the figures onto an old paint bottle using blue tack. This is to make it easier to get paint into all the details and get around the underside of the figure, just to ensure you get full paint coverage. I then primed them in Vallejo White. I've got mixed feelings about priming. I've used white, black, brown, sometimes I don't even bother. I've never seen any difference whatsoever in whichever method I've ever used. However, it's a good way of picking up details on the figure, so it's probably worthwhile doing. Once this is completely dry, I paint the uniform putties and any cloth caps the figures are wearing. The Romanian uniform was a darkish khaki colour, and I find English uniform by Vallejo is great for this, especially with a dark wash later. The trousers are slightly darker, but to be honest, at this scale and a tabletop distance, no one's really going to notice. So I use a big brush and I just slap this on. There's no point being neat, as we're going to paint over other areas later anyway. Make sure that everything is covered before you finish though. I then move on to the flesh, using sunny skin tone, again from Vallejo. This just goes on the hands and the faces and any other exposed skin, although it's pretty much just the hands and the faces in this case. Be as neat as you can here and use a small brush as this will be easier than having to cut in with paint from the uniform later on. Boots are the next step and for this I use black. I do it now as I don't really like painting boots for some reason I never really enjoy it. Doing it early in the process gets it out of the way. Also it means if I do get some paint on the base I can clean this up later when I paint the bases. The helmets and painted equipment in the Romanian army were painted in a dark greenish colour. Reflected green is perfect for this, as it has the right shade of darkness that we need. There isn't really much painted equipment, so it's just most of the helmets at this point. 
I then get the base out of the way next, and for this I use a medium sized brush and Vallejo flat earth, and just paint up to the boots to ensure I catch any spillages from before. I do it now, as this will allow the paint to dry on the base by the time I've completed all the other steps so I can move on to ink washing quicker. The kit that the Romanians had was quite basic, it's mostly canvas bags and some leather equipment. The canvas bread bag that lay across their hip is painted in green grey, along with the little pouch for the canteen. Also, paint the straps of the bag at the same time, just use a very small point of brush and you'll be fine here. I mentioned it already, but the leather equipment is next, and this is painted in saddle red and includes the ammo pouches on the front and the other bag on the left hip. I also paint the rifle straps in the same colour, along with the bag straps and belts. The basic block colours are almost finished now, so I begin painting the wooden equipment in beige brown. So this is for the rifle stocks, other gun handles and any other wood that the figures are equipped with. Just be as neat as you can here and try not to go over areas you've already painted. Not that it really matters because you can always go back with the original colour and just cut it in again. And then finally I use gun metal for all the exposed metallic parts. This is things like the rifle bolts and barrels and also the SMGs and LMGs. You could use a darker metallic paint here for the paint and metal, but we will darken all this down in the next step anyway. The next step sees us washing the figures in Games Workshop's Agrax Earthshade, which is the best ink wash on the market in my opinion. Using a biggish brush just get an even cover of Agrax across the entire figure. Make sure it doesn't pull, and use your brush to draw it off if it does. Cover everything, including the base. Once the Agrax is dry, which should take a few hours, but again, safer to leave it overnight, it's time to start highlighting. For 15mm figures I only use the base coat of a few select colours to highlight. You can do more if you want by adding a lighter shade of the base coat in incrementally smaller areas on the figure. However, at 3 feet away on the tabletop you're not really going to see this amount of detail. So just one silver is good enough and it really speeds up the process. For the Romanians I highlight their flesh with a small dot of sunny skin tone on the raised areas, such as the back of their hands, the cheeks and the noses. Then I put reflected green on the top of their helmet just to catch the very upper part. Using English uniform I hit all the high folds on the uniform and some of the flatter parts of the tunic in the rear, for example. Again you only need to barely touch these areas with your brush, it's just enough to create that subtle shade from a darkened base colour to base colour again. And finally for the highlights I go back over the canvas equipment with green grey, ensuring I get the straps as well. I don't bother with the other colours as I like the look of the leather and the wood with the pure Agrax wash over them. It also gives a nice bit of contrast to the other areas that you have highlighted. Then using a spray matte varnish I seal the figures one at a time. Ensure you do this in a well ventilated room or preferably outside. And for this I use Windsor & Newton Professional Artist Matte Varnish. It's the best on the market as far as I'm concerned. Once the varnish is dry I finish off the bases using static grass. You could use an applicator here but I don't bother, blowing on the base afterwards just makes it stand up anyway. Just paint undiluted PVA glue across the base then sprinkle the grass over the top, leave them to dry and you're done. And here they are, the full platoon after 1942 for Chain of Command. It took me about a week to paint these and I did each section in a session of about 2 hours. They are dead easy to paint a tabletop standard and you won't notice any missing details when they're in a game anyway. I hope you've enjoyed this video, if so please leave a comment and a like, also feel free to check out my Patreon and channel membership as it all helps out the channel, and I'll see you in the next Storm of Steel video.